In this video, I disassembled the bad fan motor I replaced in the 94-97 Accord cooling fan replacement video. Check the description for the link. Before I take it apart, here's what the bearings sound like. Oof, look at that. That is never a good sign. You see that? Those are metal shavings. And the reason why they're attracted to the body of the motor like this is, you'll see when I disassemble this, that there will be a ring of magnets around the perimeter of the motor because this is a permanent magnet DC motor. And here we have the bare motor, and there's a lot of play here. Normally, you feel for play, but here you can clearly see it. So these bearings have been worn out for a while, and the motor was continually allowed to operate. The wear just got worse and worse. Honestly, after seeing how much play there is here, I'm surprised that this motor rotated at all. So let's open this thing up. On the back here, there are numerous stakes around the perimeter. I just have to bend those outward, and then I should be able to pop the end cap off. What you have here on the back, these are your two brushes. Yeah, it looks like I broke the back of the uh, brush holder off, I'm removing the back piece. I don't care, this motor's going in the trash anyway. Would have been more careful if I was intending to reuse this motor. Each brush is connected via this copper braid to one of these wires. So one of these brushes is connected to battery positive and the other is connected to battery negative. And inside you have the armature, which is being held in by permanent magnets around the perimeter. Here it is. And inside you have two permanent magnets. So the armature is supported by two bearings. One here, which is at the front of the motor. And one here, which is at the back of the motor. So what happened was, the bushings ran out of lubricant, the motor continued to operate, the shaft wore into the bushing, 
until it became egg-shaped. That caused the armature to sag, and whenever the motor was turned on, the armature then scrubbed against the permanent magnets bonded to the body of the motor here, and that is what caused that awful noise. So what this boils down to is the bushing ran out of lubricant, and that caused it to fail. So I've removed the rear bearing cap to give you a better look at this bushing. This is the retainer that holds the bushing in place. That's the bushing itself. And this around here is the wick. And this is what holds the oil, which keeps the bushing from wearing out. So when they say, you know, lubricated for life, well, your lifetime of lubricant is in this material right here. And this is just like a sponge. If I saturate a sponge with water, the sponge will hold that water. Well, that's what they're doing here. They saturate this in oil, and this retains the oil. So as you can see here, the wick sits around the bushing. Now the bushing isn't solid metal. If you were to look at it, you'd see it has very fine pores in it. So what happens is the oil leaves the wick, goes through the pores of the bushing, and creates a thin film between the bushing and the motor shaft. And as the motor shaft spins, that's what prevents it from wearing down the bushing. But when that lubricant is gone, you just have metal on metal. Now the motor shaft is harder than the bushing. The bushing material is actually much softer, so it wears away at the bushing, the bushing becomes egg-shaped, as it did here, and the motor fails. So here are your components. You have the motor housing, which contains the front bushing, and the permanent magnets, one here, and one here. The armature, and this is the commutator. The brushes make contact with the commutator. The commutator allows this rotating assembly to be connected to the battery. And here is the motor end cap slash brush holder assembly. As you can see, I was a little bit rough opening this and I broke the back half of this brush holder off. This is what it normally is supposed to look like. And these are spring-loaded so that when the armature shaft goes into the bearing here, that they make contact with the commutator. And that allows an electrical connection to be made to this rotating assembly. So in short, how this works is power comes from the battery and those wires go to these two brushes. One of these is connected to battery positive, the other to battery negative. And as the armature rotates, those brushes make contact with these segments on the commutator. So, these two brushes are making contact with only two segments on the commutator at any one time. And as the shaft rotates, the segments that it's making contact with and the windings it's making contact with change as the motor rotates. And it all simply goes together like this. The armature slips into the motor housing. The magnets actually hold the armature in place, as you can see here. And then you would simply slip the end cap on, aligning the end of the armature with the bushing in the back. Now, I'm not going to do that because you have to depress these brushes here so that they could slide over the commutator. And I clearly broke the back piece here disassembling this motor. I had no intention of reassembling it, so I was a little bit rougher than I would usually be.